the old way of farming is dead. This is the new generation. Okay, the age of technology is here. It's not just with your computer, it's within the flock and it's within your community. Rise and shine, Valley Farm family. Welcome back to another episode of The Farm. If you're new here, you are most welcome. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already and also turn your notification bells. And of course, to all our returning subscribers, thank you so much. Thank you so much for being part of the family and thank you so much for following Value Farm. We really appreciate you guys so, so much. Well, guys, we are back at the farm. It's a beautiful day rainy season yeah the rains are here and it has been really raining almost every day but today we have the beautiful sun over us and i'm super excited that we are here and of course i'm super excited to show you guys around to show you guys activities that are really happening i also have my co-director who is going to speak to you later on but i'm really super excited guys to share with you activities to inspire you guys to motivate upcoming farmers who are ready to start farming because you know we share everything with you guys the bad the the good the worst everything is right here on this channel and of course if you're an upcoming farmer this is the channel for you because we're here to really share everything with you so that you can learn something so that you can pick at least a leaf from something at least on these videos so that at least we be better farmers you know we are not really perfect at value farm but we also keep learning every day and remember learning does not stop we learn each and every time whenever you watch a video from a different channel from value farm when you do your research you're learning something so the beauty about farming is learning does not stop and today we are here to show you guys what is actually happening well it is morning and there are so many activities that are really happening everyone is busy like everyone literally is very busy especially like on a rainy day what do we do as value farm most times we do the cleaning because the animals do not go to the field as early as we we do when it's maybe a dry season so the cleaning has to be really done we clean the goat houses we clean the pig houses we clean the poultry section as well the sheep section is also cleaned so cleaning is really key there is really enough manpower for us to do the cleaning so at least we make sure that's when we do the deep cleaning of the goat and the sheep sections so we make sure we really scrub we disinfect them and of course more to that we also do spray our goats we spray our sheep at least three times a week and the reason as to why we do not take them out very early in the morning especially in the rainy season it's because of the dew the dew is not really very good for them very early in the morning so it's really advisable for you to wait for the sun or wait for the grass to dry then you take your goats to get your sheep to go out to browse or to graze even the goats themselves by the way they fear the water if you if you take them when the place is really very wet you can see how they are you know running and they don't want to step in the water so it's also very advisable for you to make sure you monitor your goats to make sure that the hooves are well cleaned eggs especially in the rainy seasons because this is for them this is the time that they always have the, the hoof rots so you have to always check if you have a person who is responsible your manager keep checking your goats to make sure that the hooves are okay so that in case maybe they are becoming rotten you at least make sure that you treat them as well disinfect them because at training seasons they are really very vulnerable and they can easily get diseases rainy seasons even most farmers do not sell their goats i've seen some farmers who always say that i can't sell to the other breeders the goats because when it's rainy season these goats are not really in perfect shape because of the weather so those are some of the things that you have to make sure that you follow as a beginner farmer as a farmer out there if you've not been following this take precaution vaccinate your your goats vaccinate your sheep as well 
follow the schedule as well do not just relax maybe because it's rainy season maybe because you can't access your farm because of the rain make sure at least you make it a point that you follow your calendar and come and vaccinate your goats because it's very necessary if you want to really multiply if you want your goats, your goats to really grow in number it is wise for you to vaccinate them to take care of them all the time to check each and every goat every day check the temperatures every day as well because that is one of the routines that we do here we do check the temperatures of these goats so that we can be able to know which one is sick which one is healthy and we isolate them so that the vet can definitely take care of them separately and also make sure that they are okay because if you're a serious farmer if you take this really passionately you do not want to make these mistakes guys so we are here of course the goats are here in their exercising yard the sun is out and it is around nine nine so nine am that is the time that our colleagues go for their breakfast very early in the morning by the way they wake up here at 6 30 to start the activities then by nine that's when they go for the breakfast so these goats here have been let out to you know to exercise because this is the exercising yard to get some vitamin d as well because it's really very necessary for them as well then also move around before they go to the fields to to browse so that is what is really happening here then of course the exotic goats are still inside the house and also the kids are still inside the house the mothers have already finished to to feed them because some of the mothers are in here as we told you guys we separate these goats i know most of you have really had this several times when i'm emphasizing about separating goats according to the um, the genetics according to their body composition sometimes so it depends on how you feel you want to do the breeding at your farm so here we do have other sections of course like this ones here these are the crossbreeds that we have here and these are the females only then we have inside that we have the exotics from south africa those are the savannas and the boars then also the kids in there so these are mothers of the kids that are inside the house then of course we have a different section for the upcoming mothers that we shall definitely breed very soon and the males then the other old goat house so that's what's happening then another thing that we have done so far in the morning we have already brought our grass from the the elephant grass that we are going to feed the goats that are going to remain here that has already been done and we are waiting of course for them to finish their porridge then the goats go out to graze so there's a lot that is really happening i'm really super excited my co-director is also eating some bananas <laughs> Wow. <laughs> it's sitting here some bananas when we come to the farm at least there's something to to harvest Guys, other farm there's nothing better than shopping uh -huh. at your own farm <laughs> you know how much these things cost in the store uh -uh. but let me tell you i came here very hungry famished some might say but the farm is giving it's sustaining giving. you're most Forgive welcome <laughs> I know it was super super hungry because when you came here we had some bananas that were served for us the so is a lot. and the sun is really so wow. hot but we are really super excited that you've joined us you're most welcome say hello to the viewers and also say something introduce yourself officially well hello my good people all those of you watching from the Caribbean from all over the world I just want to express a profound thank you for all the love and support you guys have been giving us for subscribing to Value Farm. You know, a lot of the time when we in front of the camera, we at the farm, yes, we're doing the good Lord's work, mm. but we don't really get to speak to you guys like that. And for some of you who are very upset with us because mm. you've been messaging us on WhatsApp, our apologies. The messages and the calls are so great. We get so many people that reach out and unfortunately, we have not yet staffed up you know the division to answer everybody's call immediately especially for those of you who have questions who have more detailed questions that you need answers for so our apologies we will definitely try to do better but let me tell you guys this i just came from the other section with the sheep with the sheep how are they and the other section where we actually got the additional stocking from bushane those goats are looking amazing we even have our dopper cross sheep offsprings that i'm seeing is a thing of beauty mm -hmm. i'm hopeful mm -hmm. we can keep improving the indigenous sheep that we have here sure as we continue to grow our dopper flock but when we talk about the goats that we have i just want to just address one topic which is near and dear to my heart 
You know, we always give you guys the inside bit about management and forgive the Hollywood shade, but the sun is so... It's so hot. It's shining. It's really <laughs> shining. Yeah. It's, it has risen. And the <laughs> shine is just forever it's on right too now. Much. But let's get back on topic here. We, as a community, we have to find a way to combat misinformation due to the fact that, you know, due to not, either not, lack of knowledge and some people, it's truly malice. They have the right answers, they have, the, have the, right, the right information, they just refuse to share with their fellow farmers, right? So there's a very big misnomer in this country that during the rainy season, it's the season for you guys to lose half your goats. That's a bold-faced lie, you understand? A lot of people will tell you, you don't wanna actually have your goats delivering at any portion during the rainy season. That's also not 100% accurate. Is it more challenging? Yes. yes. Can it be done? Yes. Should you limit when your goats are delivering during just the pure dry season? No, if you have the proper management. And the proper management comes with number one, making sure that the mothers, by the time they're at least between month two to three, that you're giving them the proper nutrition, you're giving the proper vaccination, and so that you can actually have that immunity yeah. passed on to the future offsprings, right? And of course, when it comes to the feeds itself, you have to, and this is a non-negotiable, you have to watch the amount of feed that you actually exposing the expecting mothers to. Sure. Because if you just let these goats feed unabated, there's a possibility that the actual offspring will get too big and you have, now you face a possibility of losing both the kid and the mom. So you have to monitor that. Now, I don't know, not everybody have the luxury of a vet, but you have to make sure that even restricting the food, you know, where you have to, not necessarily restrict, but you have to closely monitor it. And sometimes you may have to either increase or fortify how you feeding these expected moms, right? These expected nannies, right? Or you might have to actually minimize the amount of feed access you're, you're providing to them. If you have a pregnant goat, and if it's during the dry season, you don't have enough grass, you might have to augment that feed by giving them some additional grain, you know, some pellets. I know we don't want to spend the money, but think about the money you lose if you lose that offspring with the mother due to malnutrition. And another thing too, if during the dry season, if these girls don't have enough access to food, mm. what will tend to happen, the kids are gonna be born underweight and the actual nanny itself will not have enough milk to actually take care of the offsprings. But getting back on the topic of the rain in the rainy season, it is a myth. If you following your vaccination schedule, if you're keeping those kids in a very nice, warm, mm. dry space, if you're putting the grass down, if you're keeping the areas clean, we've, we've had so far 27 kids be born during this rainy season, and we have not yet lost one. Now, we have some that we purchased, some goats that we stocked from Bouchain. Those goats were not under our care. Mm. There, a lot of them got dewormed for the first time, We've and, never talked about them by the And way. so those goats, you know, are slowly being introduced to the VF way of doing things. Mm. And now they are fully adapted. But some of those kids that were born here from that external flock, right, where we didn't really, you know, um, have the time to really get them acclimated to our system, mm. we experienced some mortalities with those kids because mm. we got them when the goats were already at a later stage, right? Because the breed was so good we couldn't pass up, mm. okay? But by the same token, in terms of actual goats that are under our management, under our care here, the ones that we've actually been caring from day zero up until delivery, zero. So for that, I just want you guys to know that there's hope. Mm. You, just need to, you just need to be educated. You need to know where to go. You can always tune into VF as a source for information. Mm. We're here to support you and you should never ever feel alone. And if anybody tell you buying goats during the rainy season is a curse, they're doomed to die, 
that's a fallacy. I just wanted to clear that up. Yeah, that is so true. And of course, to our advantage as farmers, what you should really do most times on rainy season, make sure that you've planted your grasses enough because there are times that it rains maybe from morning to sunset and you can't take your goats out to graze. Make sure you have the elephant grass, you have your alfalfa already, you have your different grasses that you prepared for your goats so that if in any case you can't take them out, at least you have something to feed to them. Like I'd already told them about the vaccinations and all that, that you stressed out again. Always. That is very, very true. If you don't do that, go on. Speaking of which, I mm -hmm. saw something very devastating in yeah. our farmer's forum. And yes, there's a farmer's forum. Yeah. And I think maybe VF should actually have a discord yeah. for farmers all over the world. Farmers unite. Mm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we should probably start one. Mm. But I saw one in our farmer's forum yesterday. Our friend Tony. Yeah, yeah. Tony yeah. Goats, who's I not saw. very far from here. Yeah. And his goats were actually um, afflicted by this disease called off. Yeah. And at our farm here, we used to experience that regularly. Yeah. And so until we again, we had to ramp up our knowledge base mm -hmm. until we got a real vet that was able to give us real information and. Even then, this, this, this is to show you the level of lack of care by some of these fake vets in this country. Yeah. There's been so many times, the first time our animals were afflicted by that disease. Yeah. We had like three separate vets come to the farm and none of them wanted to tell us what to do. What the problem was. And the only prescription to that was get Kimbo. Kimbo and which is, scrub. Which is the oil and to scrub. But in reality, the moment we had a real vet on the ground, the first thing he thought, oh, there's a vaccine. Let's treat this one goat here that's afflicted. Mm. Let's make sure we get the vaccination, get all of our goats um, inoculated to this particular affliction. And you know what, since that time, We've never we gone. have not had that experience. So it was truly heartbreaking to see because when these goats get that disease, it's so painful because their lips, even the eyes, but particularly the, the lips, lips they swollen. are unable to eat. It's not just swollen, like mm -hmm. the, they have the, 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 the sores, like the bumps. It's so painful to see like an adult goat, let alone the kids. The kids. Where oh. they just cannot eat. So you should never relax on that vaccination. You should never relax on any of your scheduled vaccination, but particularly that disease. And the reason we even touching on this topic is because it again comes to knowledge. It comes to fellow farmers helping each other. other. Because in that group, I was so heartened. It made me feel so good to see other fellow farmers in that group knew exactly what, what to do. Happened? They're like, hey, you have to treat this, but there's also a vaccine. Mm. You understand? So this is what we have to do. The old way of farming is dead. This is the new generation. <laughs> okay, the age of technology is here. It's not just with your computer, it's within the flock and it's within your community. That's why we always tell you guys to ask your questions, leave your comments below. The only dumb question is the one that you don't, you ask. don't ask. So if you're suffering in silence, mm -hmm. don't blame farming, blame yourself. That's all I have to say. Wow, that is amazing. And knowledge is power. If you don't have the knowledge, you're going to fail in everything. <laughs> you have to really keep learning and also visit other farms as well, contact other farmers as well for more knowledge. Because if you are not really reached out, you know that some farmers who are really very... They selfish are, with they info. are selfish with information and also those ones who are really so arrogant or proud to reach out to other people because they feel like okay i think i'm a big enough to really consult a small farmer a small farmer may be the one who knows even something better than you do visit other farms read your things at least go and research guys off topic real quick but i'm uh -huh. so excited about something what is that i want you guys to follow me to this field uh -huh. because this is what we've been talking about mm -hmm. and i want to show you guys how we do it here on the ground of Value Farm. Yeah. Come with me, let's go. Let's go. So, I'm sorry. I feel like today I'm, I'm wearing different hats. Today I'm playing <laughs> the role of director, uh -huh. you know, producer. <laughs> I got the Hollywood Director. shades on, but I have to bring it to you guys the mm. real way. Mm. So, if you guys recall a few months back, while we were still in the dry season, we told you guys that we were actually preparing these paddocks. You see all of these posts are already been put into the ground, and we're about to actually close them off. 
while we're standing in a field of a lab, lab, lab. lab. And so the reason we're doing this is so that we can make the grazing because the number of goats at the farm is greatly increasing. We also want to make life easier for the folks managing these goats. So we want to actually do rotational grazing. So this field here has Lab Lab. We have another one back there that has Pinnacle. We have some that we actually actually have the shrubs coming up. We have other particular um, pastures that we want to plant. So ultimately, right? It's about a process, you know? This will make our life easier. Easy. So we don't need to have, you know, as the numbers of the goats continue to increase, we don't need to have 50 people watching goats, right? Exactly. We can actually leave it here because the process that we run, our goat structure has to be cleaned every day. Yeah. So now there's really no excuse where they could actually leave the goats in this um, particular paddock here exactly. for at least a day, right? They can feed. We can give them the supplementation by making sure we bring them different types of variety of feeds. And that can also be accomplished by moving them from paddock to paddock, right? True. So I'm so excited to see the Lab Lab. This is it's one of their up. favorite things to eat. Yeah, they really love the Lab Lab. So I just wanted to share this with you guys. So as a company, as a family, as a team, we really practice what we preach. That we're not true. just here. We're not YouTubers pretending to be farmers. Mm. We're farmers that happen to want to share with you guys what we go through. The good, the bad, the ugly, <laughs> you have to see it have in to order see for it. you to believe it. And farming with passion is most definitely the fact for every farmer out there. If you don't have the passion for farming, just quit. Find something else. <laughs> because if you don't put your heart <laughs> into something, you're not going to really find the fruits out of it. Yeah. So really doing this and of course planning properly, it's all about planning. If you don't plan your things, it's going to be very difficult for you. You're going to spend so much money, you know, wasting money here and there because you do not have a plan. But once you have a plan, even management, like my partner has already said, it's going to reduce on the number that number of people that we are going to use here for the goats especially or maybe for the sheep and that is going to really help us you know fix so many things at the farm so that Sorry. at least we have so much production coming in because at least there's something that has been reduced at least the goats are not going to be taken by so many people out in the field at least we have a few people managing them right here and during the dry season guys the feeds are not readily available so the plan is you make sure you stock up yeah for a dry season not a rainy day but this time it's in reverse in reverse you know you want to make sure that you get this thing done during this season here you have your all of your other grass your pinnacum your sugar sugar, sugar grays um your alfalfa you know your brocaria you grow it now and that way you harvest you turn them either into hay or to silage whichever system you want to go with so that way just because the rain is not available food don't have to be scarce especially if you're planning accordingly so that's all i have and uganda is really so blessed always utilize the seasons as they come so we are really so blessed in africa especially because i've seen even other farmers in different countries they try their best to make sure that you know what we are going to plant our grass we are going to make sure that the animals are not starving they make sure that at least they are there to provide food for the population and we farmers here this is our take of course to make sure that Food is available, not to really wait for scarcity, then, you know, we keep suffering. Let's do our job, let's do our part so that we can be able to solve the food security problem, guys. But I really appreciate you guys for watching this video up to this point. Thank you so much. If you've learned something, please leave your comments down below. This is a family. Share your ideas in case you want us to implement something here. We can also, you know, read your comments. Other farmers in the forum as well can definitely learn something from you if in case you have an idea. Feel free, share it in the comments because we read these comments, by the way, guys. But we really appreciate you guys so, so much. If you haven't checked out our social media platform, please go check out our Instagram. That is Value Farm UG. Facebook, Value Farm. Then TikTok is also Value Farm. Guys, there's a lot that you can definitely also learn from there, the behind the scenes, things that we do not show on the videos here. Yeah, we can learn from each other, guys. But really appreciate you guys so much. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Till next time, bye. bye.